In this uh, illuminating video, we look at uh, the something we looked at a number of times in Windows Forms, which is the list box and the text box. But in terms of WPS, they have to be handled differently. It's sort of a gotcha because WPF is is actually spanning several different types of. Uh, of discipline with XAML and, and type converters and that kind of thing. So you have to be careful to not try and apply old ideas from Windows Forms to WPF as this points out. Basically with this <coughs> within the grid I have a stack panel so the text box and the list box are stacked on top of one another and then I put a 30 pixel margin around the text box so these two aren't jammed together and I made the text box fairly wide for reasons you'll uh, see in a minute and the width of the uh, list box is more appropriate to what I put in it which is uh, 10 TV witches and I have a selection mode of single for the list box and the event handler for selection changed is set to LBX items underscore selection change. The name of course is LBX items for the list box and the name for the text box is TXT selected. So if we look at the code behind basically I have three different ways of handling it and the first way is the way you'd handle it in Windows Forms and basically this doesn't work because it's WPF so if we actually run this using that uh, variation and click on things you see we get the selected item which is Piper but then we get all this qualification of system.windows.controls.listboxitem which is helpful in seeing the object uh, hierarchy but not too helpful in what we actually want to put in the text box so the standard way of handling this is you create a text box item <coughs> called LBI and what's going on here I, I talked about extensively in my uh, videos on levels of abstraction for controls which is basically there's there's four levels the way I described it and you can use the is to determine what a high level abstraction control actually is and you can use the as operator to recast that control to its lower level identity and once you recast it with an as to its lower level identity you can use the properties and methods in the lower level to uh, do manipulation so if we uh, select this and do control E C to comment it out and select this and do control E U to uncomment it you see we have the list box item is set to sender as list box where sender is a very high level abstraction for the list box and we recast it as a list box with the as operator and then we get a property of that called selected item which is the item we just clicked on and then we have to recast selected item again as a list box item so there's actually two levels of typecasting in order to get this local list box uh, variable and then we take the once we have this as a list box item we take the content property of list box item convert it to a string and put it in the the text box so if we uh, compile and run this and recenter this a little better and click on one of the witches Ingrid or uh, Freya you see it appears as what we actually want it to be we don't have all this qualification because we've actually defined it in terms of the underlying namespaces so we don't have to have the namespaces specified for us and a third way of doing this just to show that you can go back to the old ways if I do control E 
C to comment this out and control E U to uncomment this. You see once again we have a list box item locally defined but this time I get list box item selected items which is a standard Windows form technique but I recast this selected item as a list box item and then we can use the property of content once again of the list box item and cast that as a string and put it in the, a local variable called selected item and then I can set the uh, text box equal to the selected item so this is sort of a combination of the two things but we do have to recast the level of abstraction of the control because we're dealing with WPF but we can also use the standard technique of using the list box dot selected item which is the Windows forms technique so if we compile and run this once again this works so you can go back to the old ways if you want to but probably it's better to just use the standard WPF technique well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe